Welcome to section 0 0.5, multiplying and dividing rational numbers. So for today's objective, we are going to compute the products and the quotients of real numbers. First, let's go back and remember some stuff we learned about square roots. So remember when we were simplifying expressions, when we have a fraction completely under the radical, we have the square root of 4 ninths. We could make this again into the square root of 4 over the square root of 9, and we will get 2 over 3. You can, miss, you can skip that middle step and just go right to 2 thirds. Just understanding you can take whatever is under the radical. If it's a fraction, you can take the square root of both the numerator and the denominator. So looking at the square root of 1.96, if you go back and look at our list of perfect squares, you might recall that 14 squared is 196. Well, this is just a decimal, and when you multiply decimals together, remember you combine their uh, decimals up. So since we have two decimals here, it means we must have started with a single decimal in both of our factors. So the square root of 1.96 is 1.4. Because if you multiply 1.4 times 1.4, you would get the two decimals. Next, we're going to look at the opposite of the square root of 25. Remember when the sign is on the outside of the radical, we are just going to have... Again, the negative comes along, the square root of 25 is 5, and we get negative 5. That's just going back and remembering what we did with square roots. With today's lesson, we're looking at products and quotients of rational numbers. So we're going to be multiplying and dividing fractions and decimals. So here we have that sign chart. We did this back when we did integers. It's the same thing. If you have two of the same signs, so a positive, positive makes a positive, negative times a negative is a positive. Same sign, positive result, opposite signs, negative result. When we are doing fractions, when we multiply and divide them, for multiplication, we just take numerator times numerator. So 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 4 is 8. So we multiply and divide. We don't have to worry about common denominators. We're just going to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Sometimes you might hear this called multiply across. All right, so one times three is three, two times four is eight. For number two, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take negative five times two, and we get negative 10. Then we have 16 times three, we get 48. But we are not done yet. When you, whenever you have fractions, you always must look to see if they are in simplest form. And negative 10 over 48 is not in simplest form. Both negative 10 and 48 are even numbers. So both 10 and 48 are divided, divisible by 2. So negative 10 divided by 2 is 5. And 48 divided by 2 is 24. Don't forget your negative sign. So our answer for this one is negative 5 24 You must always simplify fractions if you can. From now on, every fraction you write must be simplified when you have it for your final answer. If you do not, the answer is incorrect. So number three, we have a fraction multiplied by a mixed number. When you do this, you must take your mixed number and turn it into a fraction. So if you remember how to do this, negative seven and one half, you need to take the negative seven times the two you get negative 14 and you add the 1. So negative 7 and 1 half is the same as negative 15 over 2. We must turn it into a fraction and get rid of that mixed number. So now we have negative 1 third times negative 15 halves. We have a negative times a negative. So we get a positive answer of 15 over 3 times 2, which is 6. We must simplify this. They're both divisible by 3, so we get 5 halves. You can leave it as an improper fraction if you want, or you can turn it into a mixed number. I will accept either. So you can leave it as an improper fraction of 5 halves. All right, then we have 2.3 times 5.6, and 2.3, and 
5.6. 6 times 3 is 18. 12 is 13. We have placeholder 15. 10 is 11. And we get 8. 8, 2, 12. So this is 12, 8, 8. And since we are multiplying a decimal, one decimal place and one decimal place, when we're multiplying, we will get two decimal places when we multiply the decimals together. So we have 12.88. Both our factors were positive, so we have a positive answer. So that is multiplying fractions together or decimals. So one of those things we need to talk about is multiplicative inverses. So for every non-zero number, A, some number, there is a multiplicative inverse, 1 over A, such that if you multiply those two numbers together, you would get 1. Well, you have probably heard this more often as a reciprocal. Reciprocals are also called multiplicative inverses. It's just another name. And I'm sure you've used reciprocals in the past. And all we're going to do with reciprocals is we're going to flip whatever we're given and flip it upside down basically. If we want to find the reciprocals of these, this is like 15 over 1. This becomes 1 over 15. That's a reciprocal. Negative 42, you have to be careful with these ones, is 1 over 42. But we start with a negative. This is also a negative, but the negative sign must be in the numerator or it must be in front of the fraction. Do not put a negative sign in the denominator. That is improper mathematics. So no negative signs in the denominator for a fraction as a final answer. So bring that negative to the numerator or bring it out front. So we have 7 eighths, we flip the fraction, we get 8 sevenths. That is our reciprocal. And we have negative 4 fifths, we flip it, we get 5 fourths. And again, it's negative, either in the numerator or out front of the fraction. So those are the reciprocals. Well, why are we doing reciprocals? Well, we need to do reciprocals so we can divide with fractions. Hopefully you'll recall that when we divide fractions, we actually multiply by the reciprocal of whatever we're dividing by, the divisor. So if we have 5 eighths divided by 1 eighth, that is the same is multiplying by the reciprocal, which would be 5 eighths times 8. And when you multiply 5 eighths times 8, this is really 8 over 1. And when we multiply fractions like this, we can do these things called canceling. This becomes 5 times 1 over 1, and we get an answer of 5. So here we have four problems that we're going to find the quotient for. So we have 1 third divided by 2 thirds. So when we're dividing by a fraction, we are actually multiplying by the reciprocal. We have one third times three halves. When we do that, we can cancel these out and we get one half. For number two, when we have negative one fourth divided by negative three eighths, this is really negative one fourth the same as times negative eight thirds. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you one way. We get 8 over 12. You could do canceling before this, but 8 over 12. Negative times negative is positive. And then we can simplify this into 2 thirds. You could also cancel out between the numerator and denominator the negative 8 and the 4. And you will end up with the same answer. So 2 thirds. For number 3, we have mixed numbers. So the first thing we have to do is change these mixed numbers into improper fractions. So 1 and 1 seventh, 1 times 7 is 7, plus 1, we get 8 over 7. And we're going to re, we're going to still write this as division yet. So we have negative 2 and 3 fifths, we're going to multiply negative 2 times 5, we get negative 10. Negative 10 and 3 is negative 13. So we have negative 13 fifths. But that division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have 8 sevenths times 5. 
13, so I'm gonna leave that negative up top. And then we multiply this across and we get negative 40 over 91. This is in simplest form. So we can leave it as negative 40 over 91. So number four, we have division of decimals, and you're gonna have this on your homework. We have negative 23.94 divided by 10.5. And with these ones, I'm not expecting you to do the long division, but you can. But if you do this on a calculator, you will find out you should get negative 2.28. And you'll notice that the sign is negative because we have a negative and a positive. So we have two different signs. We have a negative answer. So that is a quotient. That is all for section 0 0.5. Today we were multiplying and dividing rational numbers. Again, when you're doing fraction work, make sure you're showing me that you're changing mixed numbers into uh, improper fractions. Make sure you're showing me that you're flipping when you're doing division by a fraction, that you're doing the reciprocal. You must show me that work. Do not just give me the answers. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.